Hello and welcome, I am Patchworth, your game clown, once again, and welcome to Patchoween. <laughs> Alright, well this is a game that I have had for about a year, and I was going to do it for October last year, and never got around to it. But, uh... Well, that's going to change, so let's start a new game and see what this game has to offer. Oh my. of anything before this point in time. My mind is tabula rasa, yet I have a language. I seem to be in some laboratory of sorts. Maybe I can find out what happened if I look around. Oh, that's a hell of an intro. All right, well. The torture device turned into a strange machine. What kind of place is this? Uh, my kind of place. Hello, let's get a good look at you, dear. Yeah, let's turn you around. Yes, yes, yes. Look straight at me. No, wait a minute. Yes. Oh, look at you. You are lovely. Yes. Bit of a fixer-upper, but yeah, this is just not bad. Hmm. Okay, here we go. My very first memory is waking up on this thing. Before that, nothing. I wonder what I am. Not a what? You're a, you're a whom? There's a handwritten note here. Maybe it can shed some light on my situation. Oh, God. Uh, it is with shaking hands and heavy heartbeat I gather before me the instrument of my last desperate attempt. I find myself on the threshold of my toils. A turning point, I should, should I fail tonight, I doubt I shall ha find the strength and resolve to continue. At my feet now lies the lifeless remains of my beautiful Belladonna. Holy shit, what is happening here? Um... A few hours ago, my wife was alive and well, and now she has been cut open, dissected, altered, and artificially reconstructed. You know, dude, they have tender. You can just find a new wife. I, I know I'm being insensitive there, but uh, from the second she gave up her final breath, I have worked tirelessly to pressure and prepare her corpus that I might infuse a spark of being back into her lifeless limbs. This is the final test of all my research and experimentation in the fi uh, past five years. The uh, complete revivification of a human being, body and soul. The anxiety I feel is agonizing, but I feel I cannot hinder me from my last... from carrying out what I must do. For my own sake and for hers, this procedure must not fail. In my feverish dreams, my wife appears in such a lovely creature, so far removed from the creation before me, her cheeks... Once so full of laughter, are now pale, almost to the point of transparency, and the skin stretch over thin, and in the cranium it threatens to rip at any moment. Dude, just go to whatever village this place is and find a new bride. Good grief, Almighty! This is not worth the effort. Or maybe it is. I mean, you, maybe you married folks out there can uh, like let me know. I mean, I've never had a. Uh, anyway, her eyes would shine like the night sky, but are now completely, are now empty, watery, and yellow. Ugh. Seriously, I know my own dating experience hasn't been all that successful, but this seems a little extreme. I have to cling to my conviction that she will regain her former grace and vi uh, vitality. Once she is brought back from the realm of living, her eyes will light up with a flame of life, a Promethean flame stolen from the very gods. From this night, man shall be the master of his own destiny, and God shall no longer be above us. As I write, the engines of life are finally heating up, and the last preparations coming to order, the crucial moments of ever approaching time has come. Success! The attempt was success. She's alive. Oh, shit. Uh, okay, that's... I guess this is my journal here, is where I will find all of these things here. Okay, so... Goodness gracious. There's a screwdriver in this toolbox. Better take it. Yeah, in case you, uh... Yeah, uh, fall apart a little bit. 
A magnet! I love magnets. Do you? How, how do you even know that? I need something else. Uh... That won't work. That won't work. Okay, okay. I have no idea what's inside of this, but it glows. Mmm. That is one ugly gargoyle. Looks like a George to me. Hey, George. What's up? The George Goyle. Ooh, surgical tools. Shiny. Ugh, okay. This is turning out to be... Yeah, like, literally, it's like I'd seen screenshots for this, but I don't know anything about this game other than, obviously, it's about this walking, talking corpse machine. Now is not the time. Now is not the time. You're going... I'm going to predict this right now. This is going to end up turning the doctor, whoever did this, into... Books. A lot of natural philosophy and chemistry. Something by an M.W. Shelley. Mm, Mary Shelley. Yep, Frankenstein. Somebody's been boning up! It's a brain in a jar. I wonder what it's thinking. Hmm... Abby normal skull a human skull or a paperweight either way it works for me I love skulls this oil looks expensive let's waste it <laughs> oh man I like you it looks like the legs of a frog hooked up with wires and I'm pretty sure it moves when I'm not watching yeah gross okay well this room is just full of wonderful things the door won't budge. It seems to be barred from the other side. I might be able to unscrew these hinges, though. Hmm. If only I had some kind of machine. The screws on these hinges are rusty and stuck. I need some lubricant to loosen them up. Okay. I smeared some oil on the rusty screws. That should loosen them up. I'm free. Free! Free falling! Oh, here we go. Here's another one. Hey, buddy. What a dedicated night to guard a damp dungeon like this. Maybe he was demoted. <laughs> Maybe he likes the dark. Maybe he's secretly a poet. I bet his name is Roland. Hi, Roland. Have you met George? George? Hey, buddy. I don't even know how long this game is. Another piece of paper. This was written long before the last one. Hmm. Oh god, here we go. Um, work is going great. A rat, I kept a rat alive for one hour and 26 minutes last night. We'll uh, move on more larger animal mammals next week. Uh, I find my life more and more polarized into two phases. I remember times when I used to climb up and down the stairs like a squirrel each day, but now I spend most of my time and indeed most of my thought down here in my laboratory. I only step upstairs at night to sleep. It is warmer upstairs than in the living area, but boring and under-stimulating. Down here is where I make progress. Down here is what matters, and I, as I lie awake beside my sleeping wife, I often wish I was down here more with my experiments. Oh, wait a second. Is this before she died? Belladonna grows increasingly distant, ever since the fateful night when our baby Lucas gave... Shit. Gave up his last breath. She lost all trace of her old self. God knows what she is thinking about as she silently gazes into the empty air on restless nights, back and forth in the great hall. I, at least, am working within my working with my grief. I have turned my attention to the science of life and death, and not a day goes by when I do not think of how my son was ultimately taken from me. This is the thought that drives me. In this, the greatest of ambition, my own son will never return. I have accepted that now, but thanks to me and my work in the cold, ruthless contrast between the living and dead, I will have a, a future to be much softer, maybe even come, uh, dead. The dead in the future will be much softer, maybe even completely erased. Hmm. Uh, my wife, though, has let our grief devour her whole. She is emotionally and intellectually paralyzed, it seems to me. All of her creativity and quickness of thought, the wittiness of her speech and nimble way she has used to jump from one conclusion to the next, all those qualities that made me fall in love with her in the first place, they have all been snuffed out like the flame of a candle. This makes me wonder even more why I bother to go up to her bed every night. 
The shell in which she has enclosed herself cannot be breached by anything I say or do. You know, instead of, like, dedicating your life to the, the science of life and death, how about psychology, maybe, would have been a better use of your time? It is almost as if she is involved with someone other than me. I feel ridiculous for even writing it down. No! It seems ludicrous to think that Belladonna's distance is me to do to her seeing another man. I will not accuse her of that. It is one of my many strange ideas that seems to appear in my head while I am down here by myself. I am probably just tired. I'd better try and get some sleep as soon as this rat's heart stops beating. Splendid. All right, a stick. It looks like someone has been sleeping quite a lot in this sorry excuse for a bed, and it was hardly the suit of armor. I don't know but about that. Why would someone choose to sleep down here? I don't know. Give me the stick. There's a long stick here. Perhaps it was used to try to chase away rats when trying to sleep. Hmm. Oh, no, no, Roland, come on. I, I don't got time for you right now. More writings from the lonely doctor. Aw, feeling sympathy for him. I curse my miserable existence, the hopelessness from which I have seen no conceivable escape. I cannot rid myself of the feeling that there is something of utmost importance that I need to take care of, but the time has not yet come. Uh, that something beyond my control needs to be completed first. I carry inside me a sensation of waiting, yet I cannot name the thing that I am waiting for. In the meantime, all that I can do is work. I do make progress, but at the excruciating slow rate, I, uh, and nothing I accomplish seems to calm the anxiety of my head. I sleep only a few hours every night and cannot remember my last hot meal. I am feverish and jump at the smallest of sounds. What is it that I am missing? I am spending more and more time down here with my research. Only occasionally go upstairs to sleep in the master bedroom. Most nights I sleep. If at all I'm a makeshift bed I have constructed in the cellar, it is not uh, that comfortable, but my research at this point is where it oftentimes requires my constant attention, and comfort is not my priority. I am certain I am uh, advancing even closer to the breakthrough, but it is, it is my, though I am powerless to control, e even affect the rate of its currents. Wolfram von Krappenschlassen, Fossenschlassen, Seissen, Fossen. I'm guessing he's German. Uh, on top of this, I cannot rid myself of the idea that Benadon has forgot me and has taken a new lover. A new man in her life, someone more lively than me, perhaps. Someone who can still look at life in joy and optimism to match her own grave, tragedy, unaffected humor. <sighs> Yet who would that be? I cannot remember a friend. I can remember a friend we used to have in my memory. Our wedding, he was crowded in a festive event. But it's been years since this castle has seen any visitors. I have no time for social obligations, and Belladonna seems to have given up at everything that has a pleasant in life. I suspect the castle is undesirable condition as well. Almost all of the staff has left us. We are down to one girl who dusts the cupboards and lights the fireplaces, but I don't see much of her either these days. For all I know, she might be gone as well. I cannot be a, possibly be a man in Belladonna's life, others apart from me. Okay, so... I wonder what uh, all... I mean, th uh, th these seem to be, like, the main plot after her death. I'm guessing that these might be telling the story before... But regardless, where the hell's the doctor now?